Hello and welcome to episode number 20 of the Scottish History Podcast. My name is Owen Innes and yes, we're up to episode 20 already. Now just before we jump into the episode folks, let me just quickly run through where you can find us. Uh, You can find us on facebook.com forward slash Scott History Pod, on Twitter at Scott History Pod, Instagram Scott History Pod as well. One of the other things that we uh, have running for the podcast is a Patreon page. This is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. So patreon.com forward slash Scott History Pod. This allows you, if you want to, to uh, subscribe to the podcast for between £1 and £3 per month. Uh, You can opt out at any particular time. You don't need to feel pressured into it. If you do, it helps support the podcast for the hosting fees and for things like equipment and things like that. It's it's not to, uh, I'm not looking to earn a living from this, but if you feel like in any way contributing to the podcast, that's how you can do so. Okay, so this week's podcast is going to be on the Stone of Destiny. I've mentioned the Stone of Destiny in a couple of previous episodes, and I did promise way back, I think in episode number three or even number four, uh, a separate episode on it. So, finally, 18, 19 episodes later, here it is. So the Stone of Destiny, or also known as the Stone of Schoon, or the Coronation Stone in England, is an oblong block of red sandstone that was originally used to crown Scottish kings, but since its theft by Edward I, was used to crown English monarchs upon, and then finally with the unions uh, of the crowns in 1707, also monarchs of Britain. Its origins are controversial, Another name for the stone could be Jacob's Pillow. This comes from the story in Genesis in the Bible where Jacob used a group of stones as a pillow and had his, had his dream of building a ladder up to heaven. Afterward, Jacob is said to have consecrated the stone in the ground. A usual belief, though, is that the stone was originally from Ireland and possibly brought to Scotland by St. Columba. Columba did crown Aidan of Dalriada on the stone in 574. This theory is more plausible as the stone was originally kept in Iona before being moved to Perthshire, where it was kept at Dunkeld, Athol and finally Schoon. At Schoon, this is where the kings and queens of Scotland were crowned on the stone until 1296 when during the Wars of Independence, King Edward I of England sacked the port town of Berwick, defeated an army at Dunbar, and decided to take the stone along with Scotland's crown, scepter and sword, or simply the Scottish crown jewels, along with what was also known as the Black Rood, or the Holy Rood of St Margaret of Scotland. The Holy Rood, or the Black Rood, is said to be a piece of the cross in which Jesus died upon, The Black Rood was presumably destroyed in Durham in 1540 during the Reformation. Upon taking the stone to England, it was placed in a specially made throne known as Edward's Throne and stored underneath the seat which Edward believed to show his claim for overlordship of Scotland. Another big question about the stone, however, is is the stone we know today the real original stone? The geological tests do reveal that the stone is red sandstone and was quarried near Schoon. However, this then puts paid to the theory that the stone originated in Ireland. This is where many think the original stone was hidden by the monks somewhere near Schoon and replaced with a replica. Again, a highly plausible theory is the defeat at Dunbar occurred in mid-March and the English did not arrive at Schoon until the June. With three months to plan and replicate the relic, it could be a plausible theory. Thus, the conspiracy, if you will, leads many to call the stone we see today as the Westminster Stone. One major point on the side of believing this isn't the real stone is that at no point, even during the writing of the Treaty of Northampton, the Scots never requested the return of the stone. If it were such an important relic, don't you think we would have requested its return? We did request and receive, however, the return of St. Margaret's Black Rood, but not the stone. 
However, also none of Edward's Scottish noble subjects stated it was fake, and the geologists found over nine separate periods of workmanship on the stone that we see today, as well as erosion accurate to its use that confirms that it is indeed an ancient artefact. In 1950, a group of Scottish students from the University of Glasgow decided to steal the stone and bring it back to Scotland. Ian Hamilton, Gavin Vernon, Kay Matheson and Alan Stewart, after help from funding from Glaswegian businessman Robert Gray, headed to London in two Ford Anglia cars. An attempt was first made on Christmas Eve, but Hamilton was caught by the night watchman and sent on his way. The following night, Christmas night, the second attempt was made. The three men of the group entered Westminster Abbey via the Poet's Corner. When they removed the stone, it was heavier than they anticipated, and the stone fell and cracked into two separate pieces. Using Hamilton's Macintosh jacket, they dragged the two pieces down the altar, and Hamilton put the smaller of the two pieces into the boot of one of the cars. Hamilton joined Kay Matheson in the car when a policeman approached. They had a fairly jovial conversation, being Christmas time, and the policeman left him alone after a while. Kay drove to the Victoria area of London with Hamilton getting out along the way and returning to the Abbey to find Vernon and Stuart missing. Hamilton dragged the rest of the stone to the second car when the other two appeared. Hamilton and Stuart then drove to Kent where they hid the stone in a field. Matheson took her car to the Midlands and left it there and returned to Scotland by train, as did Stuart. The following day it was discovered that the stone was missing, resulting in the border being closed between Scotland and England for the first time in over 400 years. Two weeks later Hamilton and some others returned to England to recover the pieces. They were then taken to a stonemason called Robert Gray, not to be confused with the businessman who funded this whole thing, who regularly made replicas of the stone for it to be repaired. During the repair, Gray placed a brass rod inside the stone which contained a piece of paper of which the contents are still unknown. In April 1951, after an anonymous tip, the stone was discovered on the site of the high altar of the ruined Arbroath Abbey, draped in the flag of St Andrew's Cross. This was where the famous Declaration of Arbroath was signed, of which there is a full reading available on the bonus episode number two of this particular podcast. After that, the stone was then returned to Westminster Abbey in February 1952. Hamilton later admitted his involvement but the police decided not to prosecute to prevent the matter becoming politicised. Sir Hartley Shawcross, a Labour politician and barrister, remarked in court, The clandestine removal of the stone from Westminster Abbey and the manifest disregard for the sanctity of the Abbey were vulgar acts of vandalism which have caused great distress and offence both in England and Scotland. I do not think, however, that the public interest requires criminal procedures to be taken. Now really it is thanks to this group of four students that Scottish nationalism began to rise. In Scotland, the Scottish National Party only had 0.7% of the vote in Scotland. Today they now hold the majority vote in Scotland of over 45% at the last election. Interest in independence and devolution increased, with an independence and devolution vote in both 1979, of which support for devolution and independence was over 51%, meaning a majority. However, because only 32.9% of the electorate went out to vote, the result was vetoed by the English Labour Party. The second vote in 2014 ended with a 45% in favour of independence. That independence battle is still underway today. Devolution, however, was achieved in 1999, and Scotland held its first parliament 292 years after its last in September of that year. It is again, though, thanks to the announcement by John Major in 1996 that again started this whole independence rise. 
also due to the release and success of Braveheart in 1995, John Major's announcement was that the stone would be returned to Scotland. On loan. An official handover ceremony took place on the 30th of November 1996, St Andrew's Day, at Edinburgh Castle, and the Royal Warrant was transferred to the Commissioners for the Regalia. It can today be viewed in the Crown Room with the returned Scottish Crown Jewels. There is, however, a clause in the agreement that the stone must be returned to Westminster for all future coronations. So the Stone of Destiny is is quite a big thing for Scots. Uh, it is a symbol of our independence in a, in a way, you know, taken from us in 1296 when we were constantly under threat from Edward the First, then obviously Edward the Second, and so on. Then with the Union of the Crowns in 1707, of which we didn't really have a choice in, um, it became quite the symbol. So I remember back in 1996, it could even have been, um, it was either late 1996 or early 1997, my dad took me and my little brother to Edinburgh Castle to see the Stone of Destiny for the first time. And I remember going up to the castle and we bought tickets for the castle and then we had to start walking away from the castle we had to walk approximately a quarter of a mile down the Royal Mile. Uh, so we were probably approximately round about St Giles Cathedral from memory. That's where the queue to go and see the Stone of Destiny started. So that's where we joined the queue to go in just to see the Stone of Destiny. You had to, we could have just walked into the castle, went and seen the rest of the castle, but then would have had to have come out and went down to the bottom to to stand in the queue to, to go in to see the Stone of Destiny. It was crazy, crazy, crazy time uh, when the stone came back up to Scotland. So, um, And I think, from memory, that was also the last time that I went to see it. Um, I've not been to Edinburgh Castle very often but uh, I think with um, you know the lockdown restrictions etc starting to get eased I'm going to start doing things like that uh, again it's been a, a long time since I've been to uh, I've been to Stirling quite a few times in recent times but Edinburgh Castle although it's right on my doorstep I can't honestly remember the last time I was there so anyway, folks, uh, I genuinely thought that this episode would be slightly longer. Uh, again, you know, over 10, 11 pages worth of research, and there we go. It's all done in, uh, well, at the moment, less than 15 minutes. Um, but what I want to do is uh, with this podcast is, of course, to give you, uh, is do the best research that I possibly can and give you the information that I can possibly give all in one go. There's a few things mentioned within the podcast in which I will be focusing on at a later date. For example, St. Columba, St. Margaret, St. Andrew, where did the flag come from? All of these sorts of things will all come at one point. But I just want to you know, keep churning out as much uh, as possible. So this week I am on uh, holiday from work, as I mentioned on the Facebook page, so I'm going to be writing and hopefully recording a lot more episodes this particular week and then have them scheduled to be posted once a week. Once I decide what particular day, pardon me, that that's going to be, I will post that up for you all to see. But uh, hopefully now from here on in, fingers crossed, no problems arise over the course of the next week, you should have uh, an episode every single week. I do know that, of course, you know, that there might be some people who might be thinking about the Patreon, for example, and supporting the podcast in some way, but might not want to because my uploads in the past have been a little erratic. Then I completely understand that. Whereas from now, hopefully we should have uh, more content coming out. Also, uh, again, folks, I want to have your input. I want to start making some videos and things like that. Uh, what type of places would you like to see? I'm local to the Edinburgh area, but I can travel. Um, I'm not going to be travelling to, say, John O'Groats within the next week or so. You know, that's a special journey up there. Um, but if there's specific places that you would like to see, specific things that you would like to hear about, please get in touch once again through the Facebook page. Leave a comment below this video on Twitter, on Instagram, 
and uh, and again you know the patreon it's either one pound a month or three pounds a month it's never going to cost more than that i want to keep the podcast free i do not in any way qualify for adverts to be placed on the podcast either um so all of the views etc are always going to be my own um i mentioned a couple of podcasts ago about a particular coffee company i you know they they didn't ask me to do anything i just thought that the the customer service and the coffee was excellent so you know things like that i don't want to start charging uh, and i'm not going to start charging people so for those of you that currently support the patreon uh, you guys are awesome uh, for those of you that don't and are thinking about it please do have a little think about it but again you can cancel it at any time and for those of you that have no interest whatsoever in supporting via the patreon that's totally fine as well please continue to enjoy the biggest thing is i want more listeners that's the big thing um so please take a second to share tell somebody about it you know once the pubs and everything get start getting open tell someone about it over dinner tap someone on the shoulder on the train and say hey listen do you want to listen to a podcast that sort of thing uh, i'm forever recommending podcasts these days so uh, perhaps i might even do an episode about that you know some um particular podcasts that uh, that i listen to and uh, they're not even really history related either but anyway folks uh, i'm just going to continue rambling on so uh, you know please uh, continue as well to uh, rate the podcast if, especially if you're on itunes let's see if uh, by the end of the summer so let's say september october time let's see whether we can get into some form of podcast chart somewhere um, I was in the charts in New Zealand, but I uh, subsequently have now dropped out of that. Uh, I know I have loads of listeners in the US and in the UK, as well as Canada and other places. I think Sweden, etc. You know, so um, that's the handy thing with the new Acast that I'm on. It tells me exactly where where the listeners are, how many people are listening, and everything. So, uh, so that obviously I can target the right areas. Uh, for advertisement and stuff but i want this to move as uh, as far and as as widespread as possible so folks if uh, if you wouldn't mind just sharing and telling more people about the podcast i really really would appreciate it anyway folks until next week thank you very much for listening and i will speak to you again soon thank you bye-bye